Well, this is odd. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, who all is here from the minute events? There's me, Sean, Jared, and I guess Mike accounts, okay. It, it was a good time, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. It was a very dubious experience. Yeah. Really? No, no, no. No, no, what Micah feels like when he tells a bad joke. Um, anyway, uh, let me start by saying, wow, this is really loud. I know, I'm trying to turn it down. All right, let me start by saying this wasn't my intention, but my prayer ended up being, Lord, break me. Bet you not many people, not many here would ask for that. I mean, we'd ask for all sorts of different things, but not to be broken. So, Lord, break me so I can stand for you once again. Like I said, it probably wouldn't be anyone's first idea to pray. And that was my prayer at the time because I wanted to change. I needed a change, and I know I couldn't do it myself. <laughs> for my old church as a worship leader, it was awesome, and I longed for those days to come again, especially the way God moved there and through me. I'd prayed a long time ago that God would give me the strength and ability to stand, not to fall in his presence, in order to lead others. But that night, during the worship, that wasn't my prayer. It wasn't to give me strength to help me stand. It was to let me fall. And I fell. Well, actually, Jared said I was standing, and then everyone else was sitting down. But still, uh, to be able to stand once again, to be able to be broken in his presence, to feel once again, to break my stony heart, and then stand in him to have him move in me once again, to experience him anew. Mostly to be broken down. Question, like I said, who here can say they've honestly prayed to be completely broken? Really, I'm asking for a show of hands. Anyone ever pray that? Two, okay, awesome. <laughs> Not alone, right. <laughs> The Bible says, uh, pray for boldness or understanding, wisdom, or maybe even the gifts like love. Patience, I think we all know not to pray for because he gives us someone like me. Um, <laughs> or faith or to pray for help, but never hardly to be broken. Mind you, this is just going on during the opening worship session, you know. No preaching yet. My goal when I went there was where I actually didn't know what I was getting into. These guys kind of drug me along and I went for it because it worked out. You know, hey, here's the Lord. My goal was for renewing and refreshing. It was for help. And instead, I pray for, or rather to be broken. Then it was as if God closed most of my audible hearing. I was standing, I was worshiping, I was praising. And then all of a sudden, he blocked my hearing. I really could barely hear maybe a little bit of the faint music going on. And this is what I heard God say to me in that time. I have only just begun to break you. Just started to break the shell. Ouch, I crumbled. I was crying like a little baby. Maybe less whining, I'm not sure. I could care less what was going on around me. Because right in that time, it was just God and me. It was like Moses on Sinai. It was him and God. It was me and God. And as soon as I heard that, I felt consumed by his overwhelming presence and the love of a God who cared for me, of a father who has unmeasured love for his son. Like I said, I broke down. I was praying in spirit. I was before. I was praying and well, felt like I had it in a long, long time those of you that know me before. He knew what needed to be done, what I needed. God's awesome, what can I say, right? Um, when I opened my eyes, like I said, everyone was sitting. Yeah, it was you know, sort of awkward, but it was awesome. Jared had said, you know, I thought about, you know, tapping on you, tugging on you, stuff like that. I was like, no, that, that wouldn't be good. You know, when someone's in, in that, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to, Interrupt, yeah, simple as that. Uh, the guy that was actually leading the worship was named uh, Dave Hinton. 
I was wondering if I had that written down here right. I can't remember. Honestly, not my style of music. No offense, it was countryish. <laughs> no, hey. Countryish. Countryish. It was like country, hick, bluegrass, okay. uh, everything that I'm not. <laughs> but God used them. Um, he says beginning. <laughs> and, uh, well. If you're not on fire for God, your wood must be wet. Kind of like the condensation that was on the top of that that Micah couldn't say after I confused him now. If you're not on fire for God, your wood must be wet. And those of you who know me knew that I probably was laughing pretty hard when he said that. Um, but man, did a fire get started in me on the first day. And this ain't in no particular order. This is just how God gave it to me. So my apologies for that. Uh, the second day in worship again, God reminded me, and I know that I heard this from people a lot, and read it even, but God said to me, He, or I, thank you God, which have started a work, or to work, in you, in me, will complete it. He was reassuring me of what he said. He had started to break me, and he said that he would complete it. And for me, everything I heard that weekend was what I needed to hear. So what he started to do, the breaking, the work in me, he would complete it. Well, that hit me like a freight train all over again. Um, after that first session, uh, Friday morning during worship, they called people to go up, and I wanted to go. However, I kept, you know, hearing the feeling God said, on your knees where you are, and I still want to go up there. I was like, no, God, I'm going to go up there, you know, it's, I'm going to go. Um, and he said, just kneel where you stand at. So I did, and I broke down in tears all over again. It don't take man, it's all God. It felt like love and a cleansing at the same time. I was thinking, he didn't forget me. He didn't forget me. Also during that morning session Friday, uh, there was a guy named Arthur that was teaching. He said something that affected me big time. He said, if you don't let go of your past, good and bad, not just the bad, and stop living in it, you'll never be alive or you'll never live. And that was kind of gut check to me, because that's what I did. Um, I was originally prepared to have Micah the week before I did this to kind of give some homework out, you know, if y'all make a list of some of the bad things or good things. And then he asked me to do this, and I knew I had to, so I was doing other stuff. Um, um, da -da 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 -da. All right. Because uh, for the longest time I've been saying, as some of you here can uh, attest to, I wish I could get back to the way things used to be the way I used to be, to have all the good times back. Yeah. I remember when this happened, or was happening. Those were the good days. We have to let go of it all. Because we're focused on the good old days, we'll never live in today. And that may be a gut check for you, I kind of hope so. Uh, some of the bad things. Uh, broke down that some of y'all, maybe not, might have done, and I, my intention is not to offend anyone here, but some of the bad things, you know, divorce, death of a parent, uh, a parent or a relative or a friend that has hurt or abused you physically, mentally, or emotionally, a wrong turn in life, friends leaving, the church split perhaps, the death of a loved one, of a child, sin, maybe one that you keep repeating, some of the good things. Children getting married, that's a good thing. Being born, children, that's a great thing. Don't get me wrong. Things that God's done for you in the past and the way God used to move. All the exciting times that you always think about. The I remember wins. Now, they're not bad in themselves, but if that's all you can remember or talk about, then they can be the things that are holding you back or are stumbling on, because then you can't focus on what God wants to do and is doing. Imagine, if you will, living life only as expected, waiting on something else, something familiar to happen. And you miss what's happening today. Later, when Andrew preached, he had a way of bringing all the pieces together, even though he was teaching on something else. I don't know, kind of fell asleep almost on the first night. Um, God let me hear, though, what I needed to hear. But to be new, we need to be broken sometimes. We must let go of the past bad and good. To throw the proverbial baby out with the bathwater, no offense to the baptism you know, going on later on. That was just coincidental right there. Um, <laughs> as it says in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, 
Purge out the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, even as ye are unleavened, because of 2 Corinthians 5.17. Wherefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, they are become new. But Ephesians 4.22-24 through 24 says that you put away concerning the former manner of life, the old man that growth corrupt after the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, that after God hath been created in righteousness and holiness and truth. So that, according to Revelation 2.17, to him that overcometh, I will give him of the hidden manna and a new Give him a white stone, upon the stone a new name written, on which no one knows, but he that received it. Who here would like a new name from Jesus? It could be the same name, it could be something completely different. But change has to happen. I need to be broken first before change could happen in me. I was able to put away all the good things and the bad things that I was done that I've done and that's in the past before, good and bad. The way God used to move, I don't focus on anymore. And I'm able to focus on what he wants to do through me now. You need to forget the past, put off the old and on the new, as they say. Lord, break us. To the ones he can do that, he will give them one heart and he'll put a new spirit within you and will take from their flesh a stony heart and give them one flesh, according to Ezekiel eleven nineteen. Now the question is why? Answer: So we can walk with him in his statutes, his ordinance, and do them. So we will be his people, and he our God. What would it be new? But before we can be filled with the new, we must be made new to be changed and empty. Matthew nine seventeen. Neither do men put new wine into old wineskins. Yeah, I know you've heard it before. Put in new, into wineskins, else the skins burst, and the wine is spilt, and the skins perish. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. He can break the chains. He can break you. He will complete the work he started to do in each and every one of you. He's on his way. He can fill you and make you new. He will make you a new vessel, sanctified, set apart for him and his use. There's a scene in the movie Joshua when a woman says her life is broken, that God can't do anything to help her fix it. And she breaks a vase, or a vase as I like to say, into tiny pieces. Then at the end of the movie, it shows how all those tiny pieces are put together into something new, a new creation, usable and whole. What that person, and we don't either, didn't see and realize sometimes is that being broken isn't a bad place to be. Not a bad place to be at all. Sometimes it's how God works. We don't see the whole picture. We don't see the completed work. The wood of your life that's wet, he can set ablaze again like Elijah and the water on the altar. Man said it. Can't be done. God just did it. <laughs> they poured tons of water and he consumed all the water and nothing was left. Nothing was wet. He consumed the sacrifice. He consumed everything that was on it. Where the world fails, God always succeeds. When we can't fix it and we're broken, God makes us complete. A new wineskin. Someone asked me what I felt when I was praying and crying in God's presence. I didn't want to label it lest I didn't allow for change, but it's oneness with God. Acts 2.13 says, But other mocking says they are filled with new wine. <laughs> but Peter says it's too early to be drunk. God, I love Peter. Uh, Acts 2.17, It shall be in the last days, says God, I will pour forth of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Luckily, I still see visions. I don't have to worry about the dreams yet. It means I'm young still. Oh, to be drunk with God's new wine. Spirit juice, if you will. Lord, make us new. Jesus died for us so we could have life and live more abundantly. 
and this is my prayer for myself and everyone here and everyone that might be watching. Yes, this is me up here. Lord God, prepare us, O oh God, so that we may be made new. You will complete the work that you start. Set us apart for your use and purpose. Send your presence. Let it dwell among us, guide us. Behold, all things are gone. They're passed away, and the new is here. How's your vessel? Love, faith, hope, peace. Jesus' love, he leaves with us. Perfect love cast out all fear. Break us, O oh God, igniting us a new flame, dry our wet hearts, and start a fire in us. Break us. Thank you for letting me share.